What's up, guys? Welcome to a special episode of Merrick's Garage. We're going through the Milwaukee tools, and I'm going to show you how awesome some of these tools are. There is definitely some tools up here that you guys should have in your collection. Maybe some that you don't need, but we're going to get into that today and more on a new episode of Merrick's Garage. So I've been lucky to be a Milwaukee ambassador for about three or four years now. And that, as a result, I have a lot of their tools. I, I've been out to their facility. I've, I've toured their manufacturing. I, I've seen some of the new stuff coming out. So I'm pretty entrenched with these guys. But that isn't because they send me stuff. Honestly, this was one of my first pickups. And if you don't have one of these, a Milwaukee Sawzall, what are you even doing? Go out and get a Sawzall right now. Just turn off the video, go get a Sawzall because this is a do-all tool. Anyway, I bought that probably 15 years ago. I also bought a drill that I've since replaced because I did kill it. But long story short, I've been a Milwaukee guy for years. It's why I approached them in the first place because they treated me well through warranties, their pricing was always affordable, and more importantly, their batteries have never changed. The batteries from my first drill that I bought in 2006 still fit all the new stuff that's coming out and that is that is hugely important because you're making an investment in a brand when you when you buy something like this because you're investing in the batteries to know that the batteries have not changed design in years that's cool because it's a it's an easy cash grab for a company to change the design of the battery so it doesn't fit in old stuff and make you buy all new stuff I hate that Milwaukee hasn't done it it's one of the reasons that I'm still a big, full-throated supporter. So, got most of my stuff out here. We're going to break this down into a couple different areas. We've got our mechanical tools. Uh, we've got metalworking tools. We've got some fabrication and, and metal cutting tools. We've got some automotive tools, some lighting. And uh, I just thought that John and I would go through these. And th there's some tools in here that we can't live without that... I, I didn't realize I needed this tool. Let's let's just jump into it. This right here. Every like, day. This Every is day. this is probably one of our favorite favorite tools from from minor finish work to uh, spot weld removal, which is I think what they're intended for, like the shaping everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you go from this, get it down to where you mostly need it, and, and then finish, finish with up. This. It's so perfect. Yeah. Let, actually, let's start, let's start with fab tools because that's I know you do a ton with those. So this is basically my fab selection right here. My angle grinders, my dremels, my belt sanders, that sort of thing. But what, what's important to understand is you need this. Like, I mean, this tool right here is probably 11 years old. It hasn't flinched in the years and years. I mean, we use this daily still. So it's so highly used, the rubber's falling off the yeah, head. Look at this. Look at this. Anyway, basic fabrication starts with the ability to cut metal, and that's what this gives you the ability to do. By swapping out from a flap disc to a cutoff wheel, or to a wire cup or wire brush, gives you so much ability to to cut metal, to shape it, to grind it, to uh, contour it, that I think this should be most, you know, next to a drill, probably the first tool you should purchase. Uh, after, after that, I, I think if you are doing any serious metal fabrication, anything from just basic welding to, to trying to incorporate some of your projects into your truck, I, I just can't underestimate or understate just how badass this is. The, yeah, these aren't cheap, and it's totally worth the money. Yeah, Jim, Jimmy saw us doing the video. No, 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 no names. Uh, George saw us doing the, <laughs> the video on our on our Milwaukee tools, and decided to come show us young bucks what a real Milwaukee tool. What year is this? I would think the Truman, the Truman administration, or Eisenhower. <laughs> But look, look at this thing, you guys. And it's got a three. What, what is this for? When the kids figure this out in, five, in two generations from now, how to work this, this will still be working. Is this where the battery goes? Yeah. 
Dude, they don't make them like this anymore, brother. No. no. And Dude, if if it's got the lightning bolt on it. <laughs> this is so rad. Dude, look at the heft of that thing. And it cuts. It has every saw blade. And it cuts anything. That is rad. I, I just love the polish. Yes. Now, was it painted and it all wore off? But this was painted. The yeah. Red lightning bolt. Yeah. But we got, it has a number on it. I don't know. The serial number is like 17. I don't know when it was made, but. Right here. <laughs> it still works great. Whoa. Pretty rad, yeah. George. Thank you for breaking that down. Milwaukee sent me this cutoff tool a few years ago, and it, it is nice. I, I do like this thing. It's got its use for like cutting brake lines and cutting that. What else do you use it for? I mean, thinner, thinner metal. It's got great control. Make sure control. you're talking into our microphone. Our it's got great control, thinner metal. Um, but you're, if you're trying to cut something thick, it just doesn't have the torque. That, yeah. That the, uh, the cut off. big boys have, you know? You do have a lot more control. Like, like if we're doing sheet metal mm -hmm. cuts, like tiny cuts, this, this is great. But it does, it bogs down. You will eat through these wheels pretty quick because they're not as robust and yeah. big as the other ones. So I know I'm raving about this guy. I can't underestimate it. Forward, reverse, two speeds, comes in multiple different lengths, tons of different options on, on abrasive um, belts. And it just... This, this is how you make your work look professional. This is how you make cuts look clean. It's how you feather edges so it's not an obvious jagged cutoff wheel line. So definitely consider the band file from Milwaukee. I think this is a game changer. Um, Milwaukee also did die grinders, which I remember when these came out, I'd been using powered die grinders air for years. Um, once again, a really, really nice finish tool. Now, I don't think that one is as critical as this one because this flap disc can be replicated through this guy. But you use this a lot on, on when you're doing TIG work, don't you? Yeah. So don't have different abrasives on it, you know? Yeah, you can swap out all the wheels. You can put a they, scotch bright on there. Yeah, polishing. This could be really good for polishing. Now, they also do this in a straight. I've, I found the trigger stuff is, I mean, the, the angle generally gives me a little bit more control. Yeah, the pistol grip style is ideal. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save this one because this is another sleeper that has blown me away. But let's jump over to their die grinders. This actually does take a die grinder. You can swap those dies into here and have a die grinder head on there. These guys just step, <laughs> step it up in terms of power. Now... It's kind of aggressive for what we're putting in there. Like, it, it's, I do like this big handle. I do love having yeah. this to get in there. Um, It'd be nice if it had a speed control on it. So it's not just a yeah. thousand miles an hour or a zero. So this one has. There are two different flavors. One has a paddle and one has a trigger. Now, all of my angle grinders are on off. Because you want all the power. You don't want to feather. This, you want the power. A die grinder, you want to be able to feather. And if I would make a recommendation, it would be to get the paddle with the adjustable speed instead of just the on or off. I'm sure this one's cheaper, but... This one would be great if it had the adjustable speed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give us an on-off, but with adjustable speed. Yeah. So, okay. What else do we have next in our... Um, Oh, another tool that I, I don't know how useful this is for you guys. I actually purchased this with my hard-earned dollars. Um, sometimes we, we don't want to take a big sheet over to the bandsaw when we don't have to do a big cut. Or you're cutting something on a vehicle. Um, I, I haven't used that as much as I thought I would. I thought that would be a lot more of a contender. What I think happens with this... Um, I think it's our fault that, that we're using this a lot more aggressively than it's probably meant to be used. This is probably not for metal fab as much as it's for woodworking. Uh, so well, my, There's different blades, but we've destroyed them all. You get impatient with the jigsaw speed, cutting metal at a slower pace. Than, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 
And then this. Keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna start the. This surprises the hell out of you, the nibbler. Yeah, that one's that one's a game changer, dude. I mean, when you can cut through metal and it catches all the shavings in it right here. It has a little blade. I'll get close up for you guys. But it has. It has this little die that runs up and down. And when I first got it from Milwaukee, I thought, oh, that's cute. That's going to be a, you know, we can cut cardboard templates and stuff with that. What were you cutting yesterday? Oh, I was probably cutting um, what gauge four, was 14 that? gauge. No problem. 14 gauge steel. Just flying through it. Just adjustable, adjustable head so you can change the angle that you're running at. So you can pull, you can push and go sideways. Um, very, very, very impressed by this one. Yeah, because um, if you just need a little piece of steel, you know, something one foot square, and you've got a giant sheet over there, and you don't want to drag the sheet to a bandsaw or... Or to a cutoff whale. Yeah. And it's, yeah, very, very, very impressed. I, I would put this guy up against this guy in terms of uh, use Pairing and, together. Oh, yeah, good point. These two together, I think, I think you get three, these three tools, band file, angle grinder, nibbler, you're set. You're this set. is the carpal tunnel special. Okay, I'm doing, this is a legit force. I mean, th this will cut through whatever we want it to cut through. Now, we do blow through these blades quite a bit, um, but we have a smaller one. Once again, not, not all the stuff was sent to me, by the way. I bought these two because I just knew that I needed a bandsaw, and this one was incredibly uh, useful. And so we bought the smaller one. Now, here's here's one disclaimer. I feel that I feel that we use a lot of these tools outside of their intended application. Mm. Maybe a couple, but definitely don't use the bandsaws outside their recommendations. I, I don't know. Like, I see when they advertise that bandsaw, they're showing it look cutting through, like, PVC, like, industrial, like, and That's just, Because like, there's probably more guys doing that than cutting roll cage tubing, you know? <laughs> so, so we, we ask, I mean, I guess that's, that's good in the fact that yeah. we ask a lot of this stuff. Like, it, it's... You just got to be patient with it, you know? You do. You can't sit there and I go, don't oh, have this that. is taking 10 minutes versus... Yeah. Now, yes, you will quickly notice that if you smoke these things, you, you yeah. will smoke that blade and it. And you got and you got to break the blades in properly too. Yeah, good point. Um, I mean, you got to get rid of that perfect, perfect point to it because if you just plunge dive right into it, you ruin the blade pretty quick. How do we know that, John? Because we've uh, trialed and errored. We've done that sure. many, many times, and uh, we have an expensive collection of blades that don't cut anymore. But that's on us, that's, that's not on the tool. Uh, okay, so we've covered cutting, shaping, polishing, grinding. Hey, so I, I apologize, my camera was supposed to be doing this cool tracking thing, but that's why I keep disappearing out of shot. It's just doing one way, so slight technical problems. That's all right. Um, where were we? Oh, another, another tool. I know you guys are gonna be bashing me, being like, of course this guy loves Milwaukee. They send him all the free stuff. I buy a ton of Milwaukee tools too. So I, I went out and purchased this because I got sick and tired of having a grease gun that either distributes grease all over the piece that I'm trying to put grease in or distributes grease all out the back of the gun onto me. I was just, I was over it. This, what makes this guy nice, obviously it's motorized, it's got a nice chuck, but it has this purge valve because what happens is you put the cap on, you pump it full of grease, You've pressurized that thing now. Now it won't come off without you bashing on it and hitting your hand on a bunch of junk. This, fill it, hit the purge button, pop it off, move over to the next fitting. True story, I got this, and how many, how many bushings and Zerk fittings did you install grease into in the first week, do you think? <laughs> we were trying to find more vehicles to grease. <laughs> Anybody who came by the shop oh, was like getting their stuff Zerk fitting greased. The forklift was getting zerk fitted. We were looking at the toolbox on the lifts because it was just, it was, it was fun. So very satisfying, very satisfying. And, and also, you know, it, it, it works well. I mean, that's, that's the bigger thing. But if you're only made and seen one vehicle, you probably yeah, 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 don't yeah, yeah, need yeah. this. Yeah. But if you're, you know, if you do it for a living, that thing is awesome. Yeah. And, and a lot of what we use 
especially on 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 all the um, the bushings and all the Heim joints, they all have Zurich fittings. And so I, I was actually surprised how little lube there was in a lot of my fittings because I just hadn't ever... I, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I've seen the status of your main I was like, schedule. that looks dry. Yeah, so so that's this is a basic quick offering, but let's move on to some of the mechanical stuff because um, I think that's applicable to a larger audience who are doing their own basic repairs and stuff. And yeah, we'll, we'll start down at the end with the freaking monster. Bro, this is, no, you hold it, it's too heavy. Big, big boy. Dude, that is a three quarter inch drive. And I think that has something like 200,000 foot pounds. Yeah, um, Desert Eagle. Yeah, it's, it's the Desert Eagle of Milwaukee Tools. Um, I don't use it that often, but when I do use it, you better believe it's in anger. I mean, that bolt is not coming off. Well, screw you. Yes, you are. And I pull that out, and I stick a 10 mil socket on it after a bunch of adapters, and I just go to town on that header bolt. Yeah. And I win. Or Care, break careful. It. Lug nuts can bring the threads with it. Oh, yeah. It's... It's meant for industrial, like semi trucks and yeah. stuff like that. But whatever, I love it. Next one is that is a half inch drive extended anvil. Um, this extended piece for the wheels I deal with, it's great because you you try and put this up against a deep dish wheel, and the battery's hitting. You're running a bunch of extensions that decrease torque. This is great, and although it's dedicated, it's supposed to be for wheels, I use this thing for everything. This is basically my 3 8 drive, this is my half inch drive, and they both go and do everything everywhere. Um, nut driver, not much to say about these guys, they're, they're great, I think everyone should have, this is kind of like a staple, like you need a fork and a knife in your kitchen, you need a nut driver. Uh, quarter inch hex in your toolbox. And another really nice thing is most of these tools all have battery indicators. Battery indicators on them. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're getting low, it's like, I better grab a battery before yeah. I, you know, yeah. walk to the job or where the truck is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so we're, we're discussing two different types of, um, of batteries here. You're going to have your M18 and you're going to have your M12 right here. So most of the heavier duty stuff is going to be M18, although I was surprised that this runs off of that. I, I, I honestly, I'm so impressed by the power of this thing, I thought it was going to be M18. Um, They'll come out with a bigger one. Yeah, they probably will. It will just go Cuts through, through quarter, inch quarter inch plate. Can you imagine that? Just, <laughs> just earplugs necessary. Oh. Uh, this guy, this, this is a great little small handheld. They mounted a lot of the crap down in the handle, so it has a bigger feel to the handle, which I actually kind of like, because it's really balanced. This is my assembly gun. This is a half-inch drive that I got a quarter-inch drive adapter on. This is what I will do all my speeding on. i got to start this thing up again. Say something funny again. <laughs> I mean, everyone's got to have <clears throat> your hammer drill drive. Yes. I mean, that's just mandatory. These come in super handy for hard to reach places. But you, you don't like, I'll show you guys here. They, they, make, they make so, so many. I have an impact version. I've used it a handful of times. The challenge with this guy is the head is large, so it's kind of a tool that's looking for a home because it doesn't have the size advantage to get into tight spaces, but it also has, it's, I don't use this one that often, to be, to be totally frank. Uh, the short stubbies, once again, I, I don't use them that often. It's very rare I have confined space where I have to get the tool like this, um, but it's not rare that I have to go like this. So stubbies, not so much. The long extended ones, they're great. And once again, like I use this as a speeder, this is the same thing. I'm going to run a bolt down with this and then finish it off by hand or finish it off with an impact. Um, they make them in half inch, I mean, uh, three eighths, uh, friction ring and pin detent. I personally prefer the friction ring on most of my stuff, but... 
I get what I get, and I don't get upset. And uh, what else was there on the? Oh, this is this is actually a really. I thought this was kind of a gimmick when they first sent it me. Let me grab those. Uh, it's this little. It's uh, it comes with. Did I grab the right ones? Yeah. It comes with these sockets that are pass through, so you can go down over a long stud that a deep socket wouldn't necessarily work on and drive it in. Really, really cool. You're not gonna get a ton of torque, but this is all about time saver. Like if I have a, you know, a threaded, you know, 3 16 rod that I've gotta put a lock nut on, I could sit there with a ratchet or a box wrench for hours or I could just zip it down. Yeah. Makes my job easier. And finish it with a ratchet. Yeah, and finish it with a ratchet. Um, what else do we have over here? Oh, one of their lights. This, this is our, I think this is the light we argue over the most. Yeah, we could use two more. Of yeah, these. whenever John turns his back, this is coming with me and vice versa. Um, mounts anywhere, flexible head. This is actually magnetic, so you can, did you know that? I didn't know that. I never use it for that. But I, I figured it out when stuff stuck to it. I was like, what the heck? Freaking smart, this guy. Smart. But yeah, I didn't know that until something flew towards it and yeah. it stuck. So, yeah, this, this is a cool, cool light. And what else was a, the, a tire inflator? I, it's worth it. I, I, I don't know the price on this. I'm sure they're not cheap. But this The battery's thing, probably the expensive part. The battery's probably the expensive part. But man, this thing just, it, it works. It will, I just inflated, I took all of the tires on my truck. They were at 10 PSI. I took them all to 38 PSI. Now, that's a 40 inch tire. That's a significant volume of air. And I didn't give this thing any brakes. I was like, it's got a thermal regulator. It'll shut down if it needs to. And I just kept going on all five, four tires. Used two bars of a big battery and inflated all the tires in probably about 10 minutes. Very cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a quick pass at the stuff that we have in here. Um, it's not, I know it looks like a lot, but it's not, it's not really, this is what most people end up with tool selection wise. Any, any, am I missing anything? Is there anything you'd add to this? I'd say, I'd say a lot of these are, um, not necessities, No, but the ones that are are pretty obvious to yeah. us. I think if you are, okay, what about this? So you get to buy three tools to start your toolbox. What would you choose on this table? <laughs> Easy peasy. Angle grinder to start. That, that's, yeah. Band file, second. Assuming I already have. I'm assuming you've got a drill and a nut driver. Yeah. So band file, you can tell he's the fabricator, right? Band file, angle grinder, and your third choice, what's that, gonna be a light? Mm. You really, you'd probably get this, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> no. Um, I mean, maybe a bandsaw, because it'll save you a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, my turn. So I, I'm more on the mechanical side, so I would say this. So assuming you've got a drill and a nut driver. But I already have those. Most, but I'm saying you're out there, like if you're looking, you're probably looking at I mean, at if you're the man of the house, you've got one of these. Yes, but you don't have one of these. Yeah. Not necessarily. Because it comes in a pair. Okay, so are we keeping... So we're saying at, as default they have those three. I mean, these two come together. Yes. For a good deal. It, so you're saying they have... Both. Okay, okay. <sighs> New rules. <laughs> these are the, the... You've already got you've these. You've already got the bare necessities. Okay, so then I'm going to say, boom, 100%. You need an angle grinder. Sawzall, I'm counting on them having that too. Yeah. Like... You're watching a Milwaukee Tools video, so you're a tool person. So I'm assuming you've got a sawzall. Or a reciprocating saw. Or a reciprocating saw of some kind. Um, angle grinder, flap disc, cut off wheels, polishing discs, wire cups, wire wheels. There's so much damage you can do to metal with this tool. And it, it's rad. So this is my number one pick. Um, I, I would agree, I would get a band file. Um, just, just, it makes things nice. 
and it works well for, you can plunge cut holes with this. I mean, not, it's going to take some time, but thin stuff, you can plunge cut a nice little slot in it. With the Sawzall too, right? So, apparently. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, not okay, so well, yes. I've got one, two, my third, you've got this, I'm going to say pick up an angle impact. Uh, get an extended reach, don't get a quarter inch drive, get a three-eighths drive. Um, all of this stuff, start with quarter in, uh, with three-eighths drive. Don't, don't start with quarter inch. Quarter inch, you're just, you're selling yourself short, unless you're just assembling light duty stuff. If you're working on automotive, make sure that you've got at least three-eighths drive. And um, yeah, one, two, three, one of these, angle grinder file, man. Dude, that, that, my blazer was pretty much a belt with this tool, that impact, and that. That's why it looks the way it does. <laughs> that wasn't a brag, I guess. <laughs> anyway, a lot of cool stuff. Hopefully this, this pulls apart some of the morass so you guys can see where the value is. But um, yeah, I, I know I'm a fanboy. I'm a fanboy for a reason. Their stuff just works. We haven't broken. Well, have we broken anything? Yeah, but user error. Yeah. And anything that we've broken, yeah, probably me, anything we've broken, I've, I've sent back to Milwaukee. Not, not through my channels, but through regular, just As a like, normal customer. As a normal customer. And they've rebuilt stuff and honored warranties. And, and, and then one final last point. These batteries last. They're not like... Some of the lithium batteries that, you know, you fart on them wrong and they stop working. These things are going strong after years of use. They have a huge charger system that, that fortunately, I've got a lot of chargers. So all my batteries are pretty much sitting in the charger unless they're in a tool. But, um, yeah, I, I'm just, those are my final pushes for, for why I believe that Milwaukee is making great tools today. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll link some other videos up here about some other tool videos I did. And if you want to see stuff like this, we're always putting videos out on this. So go take a look at uh, merricksgarage.com to get some of our products and, and you can reach out to us there. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, taking the tour of our toolbox. Any final thoughts? No. Deep thinker. Okay, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Merrick's Garage. Turn off your phone, John! That's perfect timing. Right at the end. <laughs>